very chaotic very quickly. So let's see here again. Composition wise, it is going to be very balanced. It's going to be up to the early game. No, 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 no. I mean, hero power wise. Mm. But early game, it is all towards Echo. Yeah, he, he's got a Dragon Ball. I can literally see when the camera's off, he pulls up his Dragon Ball Z power scatter. He's just like, <laughs> boom. Oh, there we go. 10,000. <laughs> yeah, I got to agree. I mean, right now, it seems like Echo have drafted themselves a victory, but it all depends on Five execution as we head the into the land of dawn to see Echo Philippines go against RSG well Singapore. Spam your hashtags. It is Echo Loud, Echo Proud, or GGRSG. Ladies and gentlemen, let's witness. Will Echo remain undefeated or can RSG make something happen. Mm, let's find out right here, right now, because we're seeing potential cheese up on the top side here. Yaoi looking to punish this Beatrix, and that's the thing, right? Beatrix is supposed to be good in lane, but as soon as you add some external factors, it becomes a bit of a problem. Mm, let's see here already, spell checks. Yeah, 505 on that far side oh, is somehow oh. forced to use that Purify, but Echo, they're feeling confident, they're feeling aggressive, they are going to use four flickers. Let's see how it will work out. I mean, let's take a look at the emblems before things go too heavy, right? Because mm -hmm. when we see Echo, the choice of emblems, a lot of high and dries here. I think they're going to be playing for those pickoffs. So RSG Philippines, sorry, RSG Singapore, they need to be aware of that. They need to figure, they need to see that this is going to be the play that they want to go for in the early game especially. But they do have to wait for Yaoi to get that level 4 in order for him to assist in that pickoff strat. Yeah, I mean, when we're looking at the emblems, it just immediately tells us what Sanford is playing for, right? When you have high and dry, he understands that unfortunately Diablo isn't going to be as strong as him, especially with the Unbending Will, but top side now. Oh, 3v1 called TZ with the cables, jumps in towards Baby Cakes. Baby Cakes, even without the flicker, is still quite safe. Mm, I don't know. I feel like if Echo really wanted to, they could have dove that, but I guess they pulled back because they didn't see Lolzy until the very last second when he showed up mid. So, I don't know. I think it's the safer play for Echo. Don't really need to force any agendas now with Turtle coming up in three seconds. I mean, right now, RSG, I don't see them being able to actually take this next objective away because we already see that Echo is starting to set up for it. Gray in the vicinity, trying to open up the Whoa, map. But what's boss. happening, bot side? Sanji for the flicker, but first blood will fall to the hands of RSG. Can they steal this one? 4v3, Nomeo Blast will not be able to connect as Call TZ will find the first turtle. Echo equalizing a kill for the turtle. Now, but that was the thing that I was so concerned about. I think I've said it over and over that they don't have anyone, one, to pressure Carl TZ in the jungle. Because usually when we see an assassin being used, we see someone like the Masha or the Hilda to be able to deny those rotations. Second of all, they also don't have a source of CC other than the Numenon Blast coming in from RSG, which is so easy to cancel. Look, I mean, this is just a testament to how Singaporeans, especially professional teams at the highest level play. They're very, very structured. They know that they can play the later stages of the game much better than most teams as their general understanding of macro is a lot deeper. And they don't want to rely on things like risk, uh, reward. Who needs that when you have a very clear pathway to victory? They don't like the gamble, it seems like, but minute number three, Benny Kitty has secured the first item, Corrosion Scythe. And take a look at the album here, get in anything significant, perhaps? Well, uh, other than other than Sanford's high and dry, he could have picked up Weapon Master if he wants to, but uh, at this stage of the game, I mean, he knows his matchup against Diablo is going to be heavily in his favor for the majority of it. It's a wet noodle fight, right? Up throw on towards 505, and he goes down immediately. Echo, with the early game potential that they have, seems like now they are controlling the tempo. Yeah, they already have that benefit. Oh, but, oh my god, yeah, he goes in! Jack Kundo Flicker connects, and we can see here an all-out brawl. Call TZ jumps in with the cable. Sanji picking up a kill. RSG retreating right now. Lozi might be next here. No commitment just yet. Echo with the intelligent engage and disengage. That must be so frustrating, right? Because RSG, they're betting on the Numeron Blast, whereas Echo, they have Yaoi to work around to initiate, but they also have that beautiful follow-up coming in from Sanji, but Diablo, he's going to be taken down. Goodbye, Diablo. And that's... that's yeah, that's why Let's you go. take high and dry. <laughs> no, we were literally on this. We were going to say the exact same <laughs> yeah. thing. I was yeah. hoping me you were going to commit too. to that, right? The high and dry makes all the difference here. If you had Weapon Master, it probably wouldn't have the same effect. Second neutral objective will be secured comfortably. 
As hands of Echo again, RSG, they are behind on rotation, so they need to find something to equalize. Okay, so pickoffs for Echo right now. The neutral objectives so far have also been dominated by Echo. RSG, when will it be the time for them to turn online and find that power spike that perhaps they haven't found yet here in the fifth minute? Well, all of it is dependent on both 505 and Baby Kicks, who are supposed to be the ones who can actually pull them towards the later stages of the game. But let's see, because Lolzy has a lot of work to do. He can only be in so many places at once. Yeah, let's see your top side already. Three V. Or perhaps potentially 5v5. Five calls, easy jumps in. Cutthroat connects. But no, not enough damage just yet. RSG pulls back. I see the fact that Baby Cakes has been pressured quite a lot, but he's not that far behind in terms of of that level gap, so it's very interesting to see what the items say, but uh oh Oh, he lands it! Oh my god, the stun, the stun, everything goes and goes down, Call TZ, RSG, top, top, top. find the equalizer, particularly the top side, Flicker pops, my goodness, baby cakes with the 1 HP retreat, and we can see here already the both roamers just Punching bags, but okay, let's see. Conceal on towards the purple buff. Ray trying to steal that orange buff. Wave Dragon connects, not enough damage. As yet. Call TZ with the retribution, but Call TZ takes down Lulzy. Mines the double. No, Benny QT will pick up the kill. So again, Echo with the control of their jungler. That's really unfortunate for RSG. They had a really good idea. They knew that the purple buff was going to come up. They wanted to get a punish uh, specifically onto Carl TZ, but unfortunately, Echo had the foresight to understand that RSG wants to go for the punish. So instead, they go for the counter engage and the G Kundo specifically on Lolzy to deny it. Beautifully done. Kundo Flicker connects on towards Baby Case here. Top side, they are looking for the collapse. But it seems like RSG is on in time to defend. Ozzy trying to open them up the map. Oh, of Dragon, Benny QT with the Shurikens jumps in and Carl TZ to clean it off. Turtle now open, 5v4 RSG. Is this the right move? Yeah, I feel like they should just let this go. Third turtle, Call TZ looks to secure this. Let's see. But remember, it's Echo not having those really important util utilities in their ultimates. But here we go, another engage coming in from Yaoi. What? Baby Cakes? Baby Cakes got the turtle. He stole it on the, the nose of Carl TZ. What is going on as RSG finds the equalization and the turtle get it, get in. Yeah, that's just unfortunate. I was shocked for a second. I couldn't believe that Baby Cakes actually got that, but that's great for RSG. Just look at this lead that Echo has, right? They want to be at least 5k by this point. Aww. Way of Dragon, 3v1, Diablo caught off guard there. And it seems like Echo will find the first tier turret bot side. And now RSG, they are looking for an equalization, but what can they do? Well, you can expect that, you know, Carl TZ is going to look to make the aggressive play. But overall, RSG, if they have to sacrifice objectives, so be it. They still need to scale. That is their objective, right? Because Farsa is going to make Benny QT's life so very difficult. And the second question is whether or not Lozzy can actually handle Sanford. And on paper, it should be a no as long as there's a wall. My goodness, just the kill pressure that. Call TZ brings to the table. Baby Cake still surviving that one. Let's take a look at the mid side. Ray 505 looking for a setup. Wait, but River. No comment. Oh my god, River top side. Lolzy gets caught with the way of dragon, and four member is technically on him. There you go. Down goes Lolzy. I mean, you mentioned something about RSG and like the Singapore region in general of how that. Oh my god, but wait a minute! Oh! Bye bye, Call TZ. Bye bye, Baby Cakes. Now, Bray trying to find look something, trying to go for the clear as Echo will not be able to seize that mid side as. Oh, Diablo finds compensation top side. Now, right now, we can see that RSG, they're starting to figure out Echo, right? Echo, they like to go in for those pickups, but 
with, with a lot of members, they're using a lot of manpower and therefore Diablo has started to be able to use that to their advantage by starting that split push. And if this goes on over and over, it could be RSG still staying relevant in the game, Gideon. For sure. I mean, that's the idea. Both EXP laners are looking to gain pressure into the side lanes to kind of pull them apart for these neutral objectives. It's difficult, but now the kick comes through. Oh my god, Bray gets deleted. Human and Blast connects onto his one here. No follow-up damage just yet. Sanji trying to find something. Benny QT in the wow. backside finds the Farsa. Benny QT will get oh. the shutdown though. And now it's going to be a 3v3. Sanji Filiker as a defense. Maybe it's in a tough situation. Oh, that Jack Kundo is big. Baby case though, finds a double as Sanford will find the trade. Oh. At the end of the day, it's going to be 4v2. But my goodness, the Fanny out of nowhere finds the kill. Oh my god, a 4 for 2 trade and let's make it more? Okay, okay, he didn't want to commit onto that. He didn't want to make that mistake. But even then, Echo still with a huge trade on the board. Uh, it was so very close. Baby Cakes was trying to pull it by himself. He's like, all right, boys, get on to the backpack. We're going to try and take out as many of these boys as possible. Yaoi played it well. He was delaying his Jeet Kune Do on purpose, knowing that, uh, knowing that the tactical role coming in from Beatrix was going to come off of, off of cooldown really soon, just to ensure the kill was going to get through. Cartesi, however, have to keep in mind, he's very dependent on this purple buff. So if RSG finds the opening to deny it from him, these neutral objectives will become a lot easier to contest. And right now, they are going to start setting up for this next Lord. But look at this, RSG already on the way. Let's see who is going to be able to take it, as Echo seems to have the better setup for now. They're trying to bait out information with the whereabouts of RSG members. Five members clumped up here. Rosie trying to face check. Way of Dragon. Benny QT. Take a look at the damage. And Sanford will confirm the kill. Sanford will retreat as they are confirmed 5v4. So they should take Lord quite comfortably. Mm -hmm. No issues whatsoever. I don't know. I think at this point, adjustments need to be made. Like RSG, yes, they were giving up the Lord, but they cannot let Wolsey just keep walking. And he clearly isn't tanky enough to face check these rushes. They need to check it with 505, who actually has the range to do so. Or maybe in Diablo, who has eye for an eye available. But now we're going to take a look at the in-game items. What has been happening so far? Based on what I can see, it's three. Wow, actually, a lot of gold. Baby Cakes is actually trying to keep up, uh, keeping up with Benny QT despite him having three full kills on his side and also an outrageous laning phase. 505 is in trouble. Oh my god, Purify, nothing matters. Call TZ will find the kill. Diablo finds a three man Petrify here in the backside. Sanji goes down. Diablo taking a lot of damage here. Can he survive? But Sanfoy in the backside deals a lot of damage as well. Oh! Unstoppable. Wow. Sanford with that barrier, what the heck, Echo, they are just running everything full throttle. They have so much kill pressure here, it's insane. Did you see how they did that team fight? They actually split it. You could see that Sanford was pressuring that backside, 505 went down, Baby Case was being pressured, and at the end, the damage dealers, the main carries from RSG, they didn't have an answer to that. Uh -huh. They don't have it just yet, but it takes time to get their Echo. Now with a solid 5k lead, they're going to lose their inhibitor down on bot side. This is the position that Echo has been looking for for a long time. The end is nigh. When we see that 95 second clock reach zero, this Lord is going to be so very important for Echo to try and close out this game. If not, RSG will delay it for another full five minutes. 5,000 gold lead here for Echo. And you can see the player's gold that you're right, Baby Cakes. He hasn't fallen too far. So they still do have potential coming in from him. But that depends on how RSG is going to be able to protect him, right? Because so far, Baby Cakes has been pressured so much. And you're right, Lolzy. He hasn't been able to protect too much because he isn't as tanky. He's not as sustainable as someone like, let's say, Sanford or even Yaoi in this situation. I think what's the most... Like, if you were in RSG SG's position, right? It's not like you're making bad decisions. And especially in that last fight, I think that was the best example. You were making all the right calls. You were looking and targeting all the right people. But Echo, oh yes, Yaoi, he was able to get the Shunpo to dodge the stun. Oh, and even Sanford dropping the wall at 1 HP, holding it off to wait for his opponent to turn the corner so he doesn't expect it. They're just getting outplayed. It's not like RSG SG is making bad choices. 
I mean, we can see here Echo already somehow establishing a healthy amount of goal lead. But what I do really want to point out is their mechanics, their macro mm -hmm. is also very on point. Sanford here being everywhere, disgusting. Take a look at this barrier uh, delay. Mm -hmm. Ah, away from the manipulation, the beauty of Grok. Grok. Not a lot of heroes can do that. But oh. so far, I think Arashi now taking position up on towards the Lord side. See her already moving on towards the Valentina, but it seems like Sanji still is too slick. Our SG has given up position though. Echo, can they capitalize on this? Yaoi on the conceal will not find anything just yet. Oh, this is scary because Echo, they have Yaoi, they have Sanford, and they have Sanji to work with. So when they group as 5v5, Echo will definitely have a better chance, but here we go. The fight for the Lord. Numenum Blast from Valentina finds Bray. No fall of damage just yet, but Lozi here will not find the right connection as well. RSG, they are resetting here. 13,000 oh. HP. They need to make a choice right now. I mean, the, the minions are pushing in into their base. They're going to get back to it by Call Teasy if they don't choose now. Oh my god, oh my god, Call Teasy. Will they read this? Junpo tries to delay, but no, my god. 505 trying to fly. Sanford, yeah, we go, Sanford. Call Teasy. Oh my god. In the back oh my god, Daddy. Daddy UT, the base. The base echo outplayed RSG. Echo remains undefeated. Upper bracket secured with a beautiful, beautiful split push by Betty QT as well as Carl TZ. Congratulations, the Philippines. Very unfortunate for RSG SG in that moment, but